going to call to order the uh, Kingston Springs Regional Planning Commission meeting for October 8th. Uh, roll call of voting members. Keith Allgood? Present. Tony Campbell? Here. Tom Cullen? Here. Tony Gross? Here. Brad McCain? Here. Mike Patton, that's me here. Glenn Grimmick? Absent. Chuck Slater? Here. Bob Stiller? Here. Non-voting staff, Sharon Armstrong? Here. John Lawless? Here. Jennifer No? Here. Brittany Stanley? Here. We have a quorum. So you have before you the um, September 10th Planning Commission meeting minutes. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, so we got a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, those minutes are approved. You also have today's agenda before you. We have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, we got a Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. The uh, agenda for today is approved. We have no old business. Um, the first item we have under new business is consideration and recommendation of a new zoning district 5200 transitional mixed use plan unit development, TNU HUD district of Kingston Springs, Tennessee City Commission. So, uh, who's going to take that away? Thank you, Sharon. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. You have a greater packet, a proposed transitional zoning district uh, that was discussed in the General Planning Commission on several occasions. Uh, we have offered that draft to you. Um, you want to flip the first of the section where it's located. It originated from the request to develop property adjacent to the of Tennessee. The discussion originated there. And if I may, I'm going to call this bring it closer so that you can hear me without me having to shout or so that it's dead. Um, at the request of Mr. Ingram, had acquired some property adjacent to the golf club of Tennessee, and we set about looking at this to see whether or not the proposed development would fit within our current zone, which it does not. The intent of the R1A district in which this property was located, and still is, is primarily residential. It is a residential zone. The activity expressed by the group was that at some point in the future, this property may have commercial activity on it, which is also not allowed in an R1A zone. So a discussion ensued to amend the definition of country club. The golf club of Tennessee is not permitted as a golf course. It's permitted as a country club, a membership only country club. And the language within the R1A district would not allow us to amend that for commercial activity because it defeats the purpose of the R1A zone. Its primary intent is residential. So the result of all of those conversations and activity of the staff is the ordinance that you have in front of you. And the ordinance that you have in front of you is created as a transitional zone for recreational purposes between a residential zone and more commercial activity that may exist outside of it. The ordinance is not written specifically for any particular project. There are several locations around town where large tracks exist where development activity and interest is starting to occur. So this zone is one of several that may be amended again in the future if it's adopted to allow other uses. But its primary use right now is commercial recreational activity. And it has a set of ratios. There have been, I believe, uh, between the phone calls with the group and with the mayor and other people present and in the town hall, we've had probably five or six conversations uh, regarding this particular zone. So what we brought to you tonight uh, is the staff's best recommendation for how to approach this zone. So I'd be happy to answer specific questions if there are things that you would like to know. As you know, the Planning Commission in this particular instance is a recommending body to the City Commission in the adoption of a zoning change or a zoning district. So you don't have decision-making ability, but you do have recommendation ability. So having said that, I believe there are some representatives here uh, from the golf club, mm -hmm. you may wish to hear from mm -hmm. them. It's entirely up to you. Okay. Well, I wanted to ask. Thank you for that, Sharon. I wanted to ask Jennifer. Do you have any additional comment on this proposal? I'm sorry, but did you have any additional comment on this? No. I mean, this is something that we kind of went through because we've got all the property out there. It's mostly residential, mm -hmm. uh, and so we were trying to make a mixed use. Um, because if you get a strictly commercial type zone, then you're going to be spot zoning. Mm -hmm. 
And we didn't have anything, and I think Sharon touched base on this, we didn't have anything that actually set forth a zone limit for golf courses. Mm -hmm. um, we only had it for country clubs. Right. Um, and so this is, it would be kind of like any other zoning, if Kingston Springs didn't have, and I hate to use this as an example, but this example I always use. If you didn't have a zone that allowed adult entertainment, there must be some zone for, for certain things, even mm -hmm. though that may be something you, you know, mm -hmm. you always have to have a zone. So that's kind of what this creates, and it's for bigger tracts of land. And again, it's trying, with the overlay, it's trying to match between commercial and residential um, and to kind of protect the integrity of, the, of that neighborhood area. Okay, so. It sounds like both of you think this makes sense, sharing you and Jennifer you in terms of the way it's written. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, but I, so Golf Club of Tennessee is here, I understand, representation. Before, before I recognize you and, and thank you for coming, I just wanted to ask of the Planning Commission here, did you have any questions for Sharon or Jennifer Yeston? Well, uh, is this changing the zoning for the golf club of Tennessee or the land that Mr. Ingram purchased? It will be for the land that Mr. Ingram I can't hear. I, it's hard to hear him here. It's for the land that Mr. Ingram owns. It is not for the land where the golf, the golf club of Tennessee currently is. Right. Other questions for Jennifer or Sharon? I got one. I the first time I've seen this document. Uh, did you and uh, uh, Jennifer develop it yourself, or did, was it, did you take another model, take it from some other project in some other county, and it started with that, and then we modified it for this application? We started with a model I did uh, from another place, because we don't specifically, in Tennessee, golf courses are looked at in some four or five distinctly different ways. Uh, there are public courses that are located usually in industrial areas or adjacent to industrial areas. There are purely commercial courses that are short span, don't cover a lot of property. So I looked at several places before I set about with this one. And this particular one, flexibility for not only golf courses but recreational uses. And then the ancillary things that go along with that. Um, and by ancillary, I mean the things that support that activity, like the pro club, the pro shop, a restaurant, those types of things. So those are customarily available with golf courses that are either public or private. And in those discussions, and part of the rationale for looking at it this way rather than the R1A zone, it's the discussion that there would be commercial, potentially commercial activity or the reservation of the right to have commercial activity on this parcel or other parcels in the future. Once that is disclosed, commercial activity is not tolerated in an R1A zone because it is a blended residential and agricultural zone, which tolerates a lot of forces of passive activity, but does not tolerate the commercial aspects of that. So does that answer your question, Mr. Cole? Well, I wonder if did the, uh, the the owners of the property have any input at all in specifying what they might intend to use to include in the property itself, and would you take that into consideration in this document? We have had numerous discussions with them based on their perception of the development of the new property. Uh, those conversations have occurred in person, by phone call. Uh, in a number of other ways. The mayor has attended, I believe, two of those discussions as well. Um, they have had significant input, um, not in the drafting of the ordinance, but in their desire to develop. Uh, the ordinance was drafted somewhat ex parte for that discussion. Uh, the ordinance was presented uh, to them pretty much in the form that you see now with very few changes before the discussion of the revisions they wanted ever occurred. Well, they have presented to you some points of contention that they would like to see included in the they document. Have. Uh, as a matter of fact, we, uh, I was not aware until just a few minutes ago there was a point of contention. But some of the points of contention that have been raised are the blending of residential and commercial activity on the 
Obama's law. If you don't blend residential with it, then it's purely a commercial activity. If you're reserving the right to have commercial development on the property, then it's commercial activity. So that defeats the purpose. And if you remember back to last summer, uh, when we had our outreach to community, one of the things we discussed was transitional zones, kind of buffer between residential and commercial as the town grows. So this is kind of an out, sort of an outward motion of that concept and idea. Um, your downtown core is relatively small, but you have large tracts around you that lie adjacent to the city that at some point will be developed. And it's very difficult to transition from large lot subdivision peaceful and quiet existence to commercial activity. So transitional zone helps to buffer that change in use. Traffic noise and all the other things that go with it. My only point is this property is relatively isolated from the town itself. It is indeed. The development of the property as part of this town Obviously, we're going to have several major uh, issues for the town, and mainly in the access to this property on roads that are not the best in the world. Yes, sir. Um, again, this particular zoning ordinance that you have in your hand is not specific to any particular product. There's been a ton of discussion uh, amongst the principles of the annual property. We have probably 12 large tracks adjacent to the city that at some point will need to be looked at for development. Um, transitional zones are not really common in the general area as of yet. They're starting to occur more frequently. Um, one that I can use as an example very frequently is Pleasant Village, where you have commercial on the bottom floor, and you can have the middle floors are either residential or commercial, and then the third floors are reserved for residential development only. So that limited style in a park setting creates a vibrancy in that city core that can't be replicated in the old downtown area. Other questions for um, Sharon or Jennifer from the commission? Yes, sir. All the residents, the current residents of the golf course have been made aware of what's being proposed. And do we have any idea the residents have not. As of right now, in order for us to notify the residents, there has to be a project submission. We're simply looking at a zoning district as a planning commission. This is a project submission. So no one's submitting a project. I believe that the town hall to discuss the proposed development has been scheduled for the 20th. Uh, but there's not been a specific project other than SAP being sent documents. So there's nothing before the planning commission. Because we don't have an ordinance to accommodate a project of this type of scale. Okay, so I just want to catch myself up mentally before we are here. <laughs> so this uh, proposed uh, transitional mixed use pub uh, is something that can be used for large tracts of land around town. I yes. guess I get that. Uh, but it seems it also is, is something that can have application for uh, the England land next to the golf club. That's right. Right? right. Okay. So, and, um, so is there somebody here that is representing are, are they? Are we talking two different entities, the Golf Club of Tennessee and the, the Ingram Land? Are those two different entities, yeah. sir? Um, so first of all, I want to do what's appropriate. I think Sharon's had concerns about the Simon. Specifically, I'm sorry. My name is Robert Bess. I'm an attorney who represents David Ingram. I also happen to be the attorney for the Golf Club of Tennessee, um, and that's sort of illustrative of how this project has been developed. Um, but we have information about the project that we'd like to share. I'm not sure if Sharon or Mrs. Armstrong, Ms. Armstrong on the advisor that that was inappropriate for this meeting. I'm happy to share any information you want about the project. Um, 
David Ingram is excited about um, he, the black best in the Kingston Springs, and um, he wants the city to be excited about this project. And um, our goal is to be perfectly honest and transparent with you about the project. Mm -hmm. But again, this might not be the appropriate time. Um, okay. To and and you're, you are Mr. West? Yes. Okay, yes. okay thank you. I'm sorry. So, um, I hear you. I guess this is what you probably present on the 20th at the town hall? Well, yes. We, okay. we expect to have a very detailed outline of okay. this project. Looks like. So, and then again, just, just for me, um, these are two, understand Mr. Ingram, these are two different entities, though, that we're talking about. Right, that's the okay. legal rub, if you will, is the goal of the city is a not-for-profit membership of right. course, where Mr. Ingram and his family intend to construct and finance the construction of an adjacent 18 hole law course um, using their private funds. Right, you know. right. But from the outside, this New golf course will be exclusively used by members of the golf club in Tennessee. Um, Mr. Ingram's family has agreed to license the exclusive use for a term of two, initial term of 20 years. So any outside observer, this is going to look like the golf club in Tennessee just through the eight golf Right, but it's an agreement between two entities in, in reality. Is what you're saying? It's a, an agreement that the golf club in Tennessee residents can use this. Other entity. I, I just want to. They, they are two entities, is what I think I'm hearing. Well, yes. and there's a common interest, right? Uh, I think the distinction is one will have one ownership, which is the Golf Club of Tennessee, which is not the problem. Right. right. And the other golf course will be owned um, by Mr. Ingram and his family. Okay, thank you. And so, so my question to you, sir, is um, just wanted to hear for the for the benefit of the planning commission here on this proposed transitional mixed unit uh, 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 did you have any comment had you had a chance to review this i guess uh, yes we received the proposed draft i think on uh, july 8th so did you have any comments for us in terms of just your your view of this just for our benefit um the short story is yes um, the, um, again, it's, um, the, the, as you all know, the, green, the, the ordinance has some relatively complicated calculations in it that require us to do a lot of engineering studies to address those calculations. Um, and um, I think we um, are, are very close to being able to fit to the ordinance, but I think there's still some issues where we technically do not fit within the ordinance as the okay. Um, all right. Any any questions for Mr. West on that on that comment? Okay. It's the main worst point here, if we want to consider having this type of zone, regardless of what they right. Can they right. Right. Uh, yeah, I understand. I just want to have an idea of how this was lining up, since it would be. Applicable, applicable in that case, even though it's it's a has a far broader future use. So, um, thanks. So, what we are considering then, I believe, is a motion to recommend um, approval to to recommend this, this to the uh, city commission, right? To recommend this ordinance to them for approval. So, so moved. We have a, <coughs> do we have a second? So moved. Tony Grove, second. Okay. Any questions or discussions on this before we vote? Okay. So just just to clarify, if this is the, to to be recommended and then passed as it is, for your particular project, you would still need things to, to change or to or for us to have leniencies on that. Um, I think there's one specific um, provision dealing with open space and how open space is calculated okay. and um, we're limited in how we can calculate open space. And we would like that number to increase basically, you know, um, and um, right now it's 
rights, basically, uh, the property of what is split on right. And about 50% of the property has about a 20 degree split on And um, for calculation of open space, we're limited to how much of that, um, I, 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 don't, I have that front of the uh, shelf of papers. But the short story is there's one calculation where Based on our engineering studies, we don't work, our project is not compliant and to be blunt, I don't think there's a way for us to make it compliant by moving things around. Um, and so that's the only issue outstanding on the, the drafting ordinance for us. We, we think we've been able to move, like as such as Ms. Ms. Armstrong suggested, there was an issue about residential and, um, and we think we can move you know, the, the design of the project around to accommodate that. It's not ideal for our purposes, but um, yeah, we, we, we're, we're trying to make a good follow stride. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, not speaking specifically to any particular project, um, I received an email today asking if there could be a revision to the requirement for residential from 10% to 5%. Again, we are prohibited from writing zoning that particular way. Right. Um, so, and the engineer for Buckwoods and Seamster Cooper asked for a copy of the final version that was going to the planning commission. And I provided that to Mr. Cooper several days ago. Once it was publicly advertised, mm -hmm. um, I sent that to Mr. Cooper. So Mr. Cooper has been in possession of this and actually sent an email after receiving it. Uh, and to his credit, had a couple of uh, grammatical errors that I corrected, which are internalized in your packet today. So the issue for us, we're ambivalent to um, any particular project we design. So we so, have to have residential in order to make it transition. Unless we're going to do a commercial industrial transition on the right. same stuff. Thank you. So a question I have then is if we recommend approval on this, uh, send it to the city commission, yes. uh, is is there any in terms of we have to have residential on there? But is there any um, way to to address if if the owner thinks that the percent residential if this becomes the the, the put if this becomes the uh, yes is there any way for an owner of a large tract to uh, negotiate the residential outside of the variance or is it is that the only thing that can Plenty of commission with a cut, as I explained to um, several groups of people over the last couple of months, the planning commission has the authority to vary some things. Inside of the cut. Inside of the okay. cut. Because you draft the development agreement, which you then forward to the city commission. Right. Um, so you do have, that's the reason for a cut to provide flexibility. Okay. So the answer to that question, where it may be appropriate for one product, and one try to land, it's not necessarily appropriate to other places that lie adjacent to So that the PUD makes it unique yes. to this project. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this is this current PUD that we have before us. With different topographies, you're saying there may be advantages or disadvantages to the way it reads for the areas that's needed for the different things. So have you had a different topographies such as a flatter surface that someone trying to do the exact same thing, it may fall in this button. But the fact that the top the topography is different, it may not. Absolutely. Um, as you are aware, your zoning ordinance contains um, a very exception as well. And the uh, primary reason for any variances is a challenge to the land. Not the individual owner who will live through training. So, if there's a topographical, topographical issue with the property, uh, then that is a distinction for that. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, yes sir. Good question. 535 feet. Hey, 20. I'm sorry. 
says that the maximum height of any building shall be 35 feet. That is a limitation that we have in the city, not because of anything the city does. We do not have fire suppression equipment that will serve a height above 35 feet. It is available in Ashland City, but if something were on fire, by the time we got here, it would kind of defeat the purpose. Uh, and it's my understanding they also have that availability in Pleasant Unit, you know, but we don't have the availability to reach above a height of 35 feet. It's not necessarily about the structure itself. It's in the event of a rescue, we don't have anything to get to a higher floor to remove people in that sort of thing. So that's why the height is there. So two stories. It's story. 35 feet is two stories. Yes, sir. Because that's the reason for that restriction of sound because of the plan and it's five square Okay. So any other questions or comments before we vote on this motion? To, to recommend this for approval to the, to the city commission. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion. I'd like to be here. What is not doing? Pardon me? We need a roll call. We need a roll call. Okay, then we will have one. Here's my list. Okay, um, I'll call your name and give me your vote. Keith Allgood. Yes, aye. Tony Campbell. Aye. Tom Cullen. I request not to vote. Non voting. Non voting. Okay. Um, Tony Gross. Yes. Brian McCain. Yes. Mike Tadden, that's me. Yes. Chuck Slater. Yes. Bob Stoller. Yes. Okay, so the motion passes. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. Yes, sir. I'd like to, I would hope that our planner, our attorney, and our city manager are very careful as they proceed with this. And then, I apologize, Mr. Campbell. I'm I said, yes, I hope that the city planner, the attorney, and the city manager are very careful as they move forward with this. Because it would significantly have a detrimental impact on James and It could be very positive. So it's very important. I'll leave it. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, item B under new business, change in use, Moosehead Kettle Corn, 174 Latin Hills Road, map 96 Dam Group. Um, who's got that? Yes, ma'am. Hi. Uh, at the previous location of a little store on at 174 Latin Hills Road, Moosehead Popcorn, they um, they're locating there. They're also installing a commercial hood and a kettle in order they can package and sell um, from the door in the retail location that also serve venues. So it, there's no prohibiting factor from a building standpoint at all. But because it's a change in use, the building was um, originally at some point, I believe, a Domino's Pizza. Then it became a liquor store. When it became a liquor store, they took the kitchen out. So he's putting those appliances back in so this is a change in use and he's here to request approval for the change in use from a liquor store which does not require kitchen facilities or any cooking facilities at all to a uh, popcorn popping and shipping location so will that, will that location have require a grease trap will that location require a grease trap I believe that was under discussion with the building inspector. Okay. So I will check to see if that, I would imagine that that would be one of the things that I don't know. I have to okay, that's, that's outside the purview. I believe you could, you could let them. And I believe the applicant is here. Yeah. Probably yeah. better right. than set it on camera today. Thank you, Commissioner. My name is Jack McDowell with Lucy Kettlewood. And I can answer any questions that you have. Um, we will not. The um, previous building inspector, which I've been dealing with since May, has said that I would, he would like me to have a grease trap there, which is not a problem. We will be washing small utensils at, you know, in the three department sink. We're actually putting sinks back in the same locations that were before. Um, but we're, we're planning on putting a 10 or 20 pound grease trap in that location just to meet um, planning committee guidelines or anybody's guidelines, but we're not going to be actually 
to do the pots and pans and stuff. We'll pop oh. pop in, in a kettle, and then we may have, well, we have scoops and things like that to we'll wash and take on the sink, and we can and plan on putting a grease trap in location. Okay, thank you, sir. Also, fire suppression from course and fire protection as well with the building. So. Okay, so that's any questions you have, I have all the information. Okay. So we have a, a motion and a second to approve. Second. Oh, we have a question. Second. Second. Oh, we have a okay. second. We have a motion. Any other questions or comments? All right. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Do we need a roll call vote on this one? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, any other items, John? During our summer sessions where we did the outreach to the public, um, we had discussions about the area lying adjacent to downtown Kingston Springs and ways to create vibrancy. So I would like to sit down with John and Jennifer and we're going to be bringing a map to you, much like we did on Lyman Hills with a cut overlay over there for vacant tracks and look at some ways to maybe create opportunities. Uh, one of the most frequent requests that we've been getting in the last few months is for live work opportunities. So again, we're going to look at that area that lies adjacent to the downtown core, right in old downtown, and see if those opportunities exist. Right now, the zoning ordinance restricts that to kind of a lawyer, a doctor, a dentist, so you know those types of things, hair salon um, within your home occupation. So we're looking at maybe other ways to address that so that we don't so frequently have to attend board zoning appeals for everything that comes off the list and just look at the or from an ordinance standpoint in areas that are not intrusive to residential subdivisions and districts okay. adjacent to downtown. So yes sir. Sometime back I think we had a proposal for a metal working type of facility on the other side of the interstate. Yes, sir. Uh, Fair and Ironworks. Um, I think Fair and Ironworks. We have not heard any recent information. The last that we heard, they were still putting together their grading plans and their building plans. Um, I believe that the gentleman, Mr. Farron, um, is very hands on with that project and has a lot of ideas for the interior of the space. So the last that I heard, they were still putting those things together. And looking for appropriate contractors so that they could get service in any plans. Okay, thank you. So I have a question on on the Ingram project. Um, I understand there's a town hall on the 20th. That's correct. It's on my calendar. Um, what is their next step at this point in time? I believe the town hall meeting, um, they requested that we hold on to the city post room so it would be open to the public. Uh, so that in the spirit of transparency and so the public would have to know what their plans are for that land. Um, I don't know that we have any particular role other than to answer questions as much as you ask during these meetings of staff and of the planning commission what the impact would be or you know how one thing affects another. Uh, but other than that, it, it's they're going to preview to the public, their right. plans. And then following that, what would their next step be? Uh, their next step, this goes forward to the city commission. Okay. The ordinance that you recommended tonight. Okay. It requires two readings. Um, Can that go forward this month? Perhaps the agenda is already out, but we could okay. perhaps make it in. So because it was not recommended, this body is required to recommend before something can move forward. It has not. You can't presuppose on the agenda that it will be recommended. Right. So it will come forward to the city commission in November. Right. So their next step is to put together their project. If this ordinance uh, is approved on two reads, then they can submit um, right. their they project and then it comes back to the planning commission for review. They would need to be rezoned to the, to the project. Yes, they would have to be rezoned. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, all in favor adjourn.